Would you like to know how the pros clear out extremely cluttered, even hoarded homes fast and efficiently without getting overwhelmed? I've been organizing and decluttering homes for the last 20 years as a professional organizer, and I'm now working to clear out some of the most extreme homes on this season of TV's Hoarders, now airing on A&E. I'm often asked, how do you even know where to begin? Or don't you get overwhelmed? And the answer is not really, because I have a lot of tricks and shortcuts that I have developed over the years to downsize cluttered homes. Today, I'm sharing with you one of my favorite clear out strategies for extremely cluttered spaces. You can use this technique to help others downsize or to kickstart your own clutter clearing project. I just used this strategy on an upcoming episode of Hoarders. I was working with Corey Chalmers and he wanted to fill a dumpster and move it out in about an hour. To see how that turned out, be sure to subscribe to my channel here or follow me on Instagram and I'll let you know when that episode airs. The strategy I used is called Big to Small. When I'm clearing a room using the Big to Small technique, I am looking for the largest, most awkward and bulky items to eliminate first. This is usually furniture or gym equipment, you know, large boxes that are filled with only one to two items, really anything that I can move out of the space quickly. So why is this technique so effective? First, it gives you room to work. When you are starting out in a cluttered or hoarded space, you may have a team of people willing to help you, but it does not matter if you can't get them into the room. You have to make space to work, and that will happen faster if you focus on the largest items first. Ultimately, to declutter a really crowded area, you need to delegate to others and let them share in the decision making. Your team may include family members, professional cleanup crews, or organizers, are just some very kind friends who volunteered to help. The more people you have helping to clear the space, the faster it can go, unless there is a bottleneck because there is no room to work. Another reason I love the big to small strategy is that it helps create momentum on a job. It's really easy for people to get overwhelmed or feel hopeless when working in these types of spaces. Freeing up space helps everyone feel like progress is being made and gives them the energy and motivation to get through the day. An example of this strategy not being used was in episode eight, season 12 of Hoarders. This was with Debbie in that upstairs bedroom that was discussed as a room for her grandson. That ultimately did not work out, but every time I passed that room, it bothered me that no one had moved the shelf that was right inside the doorway. Later, when I was tasked with clearing a room next to that space, I could barely access the room because of that big shelf, and that was really annoying. Use the big to small technique to build momentum at the start of any big decluttering job and create space to work in that room or adjacent rooms where you need to shift the contents around. Are you an aspiring professional organizer interested in large decluttering jobs? Or maybe you are helping a friend or family member downsize. Let me know the challenges that you are facing in the comments below. If you are a professional organizer who wants to get into the business of clearing out hoarded homes, or find yourself in a position of needing to clear out an extremely cluttered house, check out my course called Tackle the Hoard so we can walk through all the facets of clearing out a hoarded home together. I put a link to my course in the description below and please subscribe to my channel for more tips on downsizing, decluttering, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.